Hey, rewind that. Retro Rewinder, Retro Game Finder with driving game pickups like a Metro Bus Liner with tips and trade and all kind of things in a beard straight out of the Lord of the Rings. With morals and collecting, he's a guy you can trust. What's the moral of this intro? He's got a camera in his nuts. Because I love video games, that's why. Hey guys, Retro Rewinder here coming at you with another What Sold video. Today is Saturday morning and I have five items today. A um, couple of these things didn't sell for as much as I thought they would. The first being this Jeffrey, the Toys R Us giraffe. He talks. Remember, animals are people too. Well, well not really. Let's play. I have to say that. I'm a toy. Come on, squeeze me. Oh, all right. Not that hard. Okay, so this only sold for like 12 or $13. I was hoping that'd sell for a little bit more. His, it's going to be a little tougher to ship because his legs are, are stiff to make him stand up. So I'm going to have to like fold his neck over to get him into the flat rate envelope. Or not flat rate, but just a padded envelope. We do have another stuffed animal today. It's a pound puppy. This is the kitten version. This will be super light and easy to ship, so I'll just throw him in a, a little, um, one of my small bubble mailers. Next thing we have here is a pair of shoes. These were brand new. I got these retail arbitrage from um, TJ Maxx. No, I got them from Ross. I bought all of these shoes. I got like 40 pairs for $200. So every shoe that I bought that day was under $10. So pretty good profit on these. I'm only down to like, I don't know, maybe 15 pairs of shoes left. This, this uh, jersey has been on my store for quite a while. It's a hockey jersey from like a triple A hockey team based out of Chicago. I'm pretty sure this was new. I don't know much about jerseys, but it did have this like um, where they put the patch on still. It's got like the backing to it. It looked like it had never been worn. Um, I listed this pretty high and it, I just kept lowering and lowering and I had, I've had watchers on it for months and months and finally just had to send out lower offers until it finally sold. This last thing we have here is a card. This came out of a game called Boss Monster. It's called Molekill. So the thing that's interesting about this is um, we have a convention here in Indianapolis called Gen Con. It's one of the large. It is the largest board game and card game conventions in the world. Um, this was a Gen Con exclusive in 2017. When I bought this, it actually came out of a the boss monster game I picked it up at Goodwill it had four of those exclusive cards in it and I already sold off the other four and I sold the boss monster game so I ended up making pretty good profit on this um, I think I paid like four bucks for the whole game and the other ones all sold for the exclusive cards all sold for more than this one did so those were the five items I had today um, like I said it wasn't a whole lot I did list some stuff last night um, one of them did sell, but it hasn't been paid for, so I will show that in the next video. It's really cool. It's a vintage G.I. Joe thing, so you'll have to stay tuned for next video if you would like to watch that. Lily really wants to go to the post office this morning, so i got to make sure that I can get these packed up so she can go with me. I think she just wants to get a sucker. But um, this has been Retro Rewinder. If you liked the video, make sure you thumbs it up, comment, and subscribe, and we'll talk to you next time. So as I was packing up shipping stuff, I thought I'd go ahead and show you how I ship playing cards or collectible cards. So I'm going to show you how we ship this guy. So the first thing you're going to need is one of these sleeves. Um, I use the Ultra Pro sleeves just because when I buy these, I buy these with the hard, um, the hard case sleeves that I'm getting ready to show you. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your card and you're going to put it into one of these sleeves. 
So I sell almost all of my cards on a program called TCG Player. Um, this is not one of the games that I saw on there, so that's why I sold this one on eBay. Um, but I do sell them on TCG. TCG player a little differently and I'll talk about the differences. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is put it in one of these sleeves. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take that sleeve and wherever the opening is, so if the opening is on top, you're going to turn it upside down and you're going to put it into one of these hard plastic sleeves. So that'll slide in there just like that. The reason that you want to put the opening down is that that way if it slides out of the plastic sleeve, it's not going to come out of the hard plastic part. And what I do is I take a little piece of tape and I put it right on top here and I seal it shut. So that way it's not going to come out. Um, the card can't slide out of the plastic sleeve. And the reason, the main reason you want to put it down like that is if it does come out of that, um, the light plastic sleeve, there's a chance it could stick to the tape still because it's not like it's shutting it a hundred percent. Um, and you don't want the, the card to actually stick to the tape because it could ruin the card. So this is where it gets a little differently versus eBay versus TCG Player. When I ship on TCG Player, I print out a um, packing slip. I then wrap that, I fold it up and I wrap the, the packing slip around the card. And then all I do after that is I put it into an envelope. It already um, has my address, my seller name pre-printed on there. And a little thing that says, please do not bend. Then, once I have it into the envelope, I put one of these stamps on there. This is a non-machinable stamp. Um, so it ends up being about 70 cents a stamp. And basically, I just take off one of these, and I put it right on the envelope, and I put it in the mail. The non-machinable stamp should tell them not to send it through the machine so it won't bend the card. But that's why I also put the please do not bend on here just to give it an extra layer of protection for them not bending the card. Um, now, I sell any card that's under $25. I sell it that way on TCG Player. I've never had an issue. I just do a stamp. TCG Player does not require um, any type of tracking system. Now, since eBay does, we're going to ship it a little differently, and this is how I would ship cards over $25 on TCG Player. So we're going to take that card, um, and I'm going to put it into a little piece of cardboard that I've cut down from an extra box. I'm going to take my piece of tape. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tape the plastic piece straight to the cardboard, like so. That way it's not going to flip around and fall out. Then we're going to take another piece of tape. We're going to fold it right over it. And I'm going to tape that down as well. So then once we have this really protected, I'm going to just throw it into a little bubble mailer. And now I folded it down and we can print our label and put it right on here. Um, I do ship things on TCG Player this way when it's over $25 just because I want the, um, the protection. I think after $50, TCG Player requires you to sell it with tracking, um, but I go ahead and do it for anything over $25. And that's how you ship playing cards and collectible cards online.